people pursue an mba degree to pivot into a better job better role better offer they don't do an mba so that they can start businesses it's a travesty that in today's day and age there are many lovely universities visiting chole bhature stalls doing their their analysis why so that a video can go viral we have been on advisory call with many of our advisors who have guided and in fact scolded us that you are charging way less of an amount for the value that you are giving chris he got a 30 lakh package more than that more than that yeah and he put in like 50000 or 60000 for a dji program Hi everyone this is a very important video because it's been 5 years of global governance initiative and since 5 years GGI has been going extremely strong on multiple fronts artificial intelligence or be on the front of entrepreneurship or be it on the front of climate impact Naman Shrivastava and I both have been the co-founders and co-CEO and at this juncture of our time with GGI we felt that we need to actually come out share our views on a lot of contemporary but important questions that a lot of you face and one of that question has been around uh, why alternative to MBA why shouldn't we sign up for any mba and the most important question is why ggi mba if you are new to our channel then uh, certainly feel free to subscribe if you are looking to learn more about careers about uh, plan b for upsc about mba or topics such as tech policy and now management consulting so you could be at a stage in your journey with ggi that you have not even applied and most importantly you could be at a very covetous position in your application that you applied and you are amongst the 5 to 6 percentage of the selected people and now you are trying to question is this worth my time is this going to be worth my money as well so we are going to be debating discussing in as much unbiased and uh, as much honest fashion as possible if we were in your situation why wouldn't we join ggi or why should we join ggi mba so naman at the outset uh, extremely excited to do this with you and uh, over to you if you have any initial remarks and about uh, answering the question as well of course thank you so much for doing this i think the only thing i would request you would be that be as honest as possible be as unfiltered as possible because it's a huge decision that many will make and they should have as much unbiased information as possible of course biases can be there from our end so please listen to this with a little bit of grain of salt but i think I should say this out loud and congratulations if you're watching this video of you perfect i think at the outset when someone is selected into our gji program many a times people ask us can you connect us with a gji alumni or can you connect us with a current gji fellow or a scholar so that i can take feedback and we always and i have guided my team to never ever connect with a particular person there are two reasons for it number one is that if we will connect you with a particular person then we know that this person is going to talk us up right so we want to make sure there are a lot and umpteen number of scholars and fellows Uh, in fact thousands of them on linkedin who talk us up so feel free to reach out to them at your own will at uh, your own selection rate whosoever you may want to pick at your own freedom as well so that's one second we take privacy very seriously at gji we do not want uh, our students to be spammed without their approval so we do not want to share anyone's personal information uh, if they have not agreed for it and in the same uh, line and breath naman i am going to take a full circle and come to that question why should someone select gji mba over other mba programs if someone has has been selected what is going to be the value of their time and money at ggi good question see beat the ggi or any other school in a separate niche or different niche or same niche i think every organization every institution is doing a remarkable job and they should be applauded for that why ggi again i'll go back to the foundations why in fact do an mba why pursue a specific course in my mind people do take up these programs essentially for three reasons number one that they want to pivot into a sector in which they cannot pivot on their own they would want to work with mckinsey or pcg or pain or any organization the un or world bank or imf and if they were to do it on their own they wouldn't have been able to do it so why mba the first thing is they want to pivot into a sector on which they cannot do it on their own gji has uh, over the past 4 5 years has built up a niche in this discipline i don't say that you know we place people in startups because no one wants to join initial startup you do an mba you go to harvard you go to stanford not to work in a startup you want to work with big named companies that's the goal and that's the hard fact placing into startups is the easiest thing to do i'm just getting rid of a responsibility we both are going in that domain doing hard negotiations with these employers these organizations and getting gjs into these domain so they want to pivot that's number 1 number 2 is that youngsters want to be part of a community and that community should not be a community of all male engineers or all indians or all japanese that's not a community it has to be diverse community it has to be a community where not just diverse industries are represented but also diverse countries are represented and that is a beautiful community that cares for each other builds up empathy stays with each other 
becomes advisory board to each other. That's why people want to do an MBA. So at GGI, we have hard pressed, had dedicated so many months, years, debates in ensuring that this community is perhaps the kindest, most diverse, most motivated community there is on the planet. And there are legit examples of people when this community came in the support of their families, real families. So that is what the second reason why people do an MBA. Having a quality community is extremely critical. At GGI, I think I've said this in the past, the clear foundation for GGI is that we have not raised a single dime from any venture fund and therefore we do not worry about scaling it up. We don't want to scale it. We have never collaborated with YouTubers. We do not bring in YouTubers to take up sessions at GGI. Why? Because that's not the model of education. Bringing in influencers just so that you can build up on your numbers and report to your investors that how much of the sales you've achieved in specific month. We don't care about that. Because only when we are focusing too much on sale, too much on scale, we will dilute the quality, we'll dilute the brand and in effect dilute the entire institution and that we cannot afford. So community will be intact and thankfully our bootstrapped orientations, bootstrapped foundations have a role to play there. The third reason why people pursue a professional program of any kind is that they want to acquire certain skills. It's very difficult to learn things on your own. Why? Because in this age, we're inundated with a lot of information. And a lot of that information is irrelevant information. You need to learn one thing and learn it from a source that is the most genuinest of all those sources. And from that point of view, at GGI, we double down our skill sets. Herein, people gain expertise, not just in the world of venture capital, or management consulting, or public policy, but they also learn about platforms. They learn about the nitty gritty and art of marketing. They learn about corporate finance, operations, so on and so forth. And that is the reason why people pursue of any professional program to pivot because you have to get a job second thing that you have to be part of a beautiful community that becomes your advisory board and number three that you want to attend certain skill sets and in all these buckets ggi in india ggi in south asia and in comparing it with many global institutions has done remarkably well so what are your thoughts on the same question sure naman i think you have very well structuredly answered the question on the three reasons uh, why someone should join for a gj mba i many a times call myself the worst capitalist because of which maybe i will talk upon why should you not join gj mba let me start with that and uh, then I will touch upon a little bit of more interesting things or ideas that's coming to my mind. Number one, you should not join GJ MBA if you're looking for placement guarantees. Guarantees are always a marketing gimmick. If someone is giving you a guarantee of 33 lakh package or if someone is giving you a guarantee of let's say going abroad and having a job there or if there are YouTubers on once again coming on your advertisement telling you that you can make a guarantee of 200 percentage return in your stock market. To my mind guarantees are a marketing gimmick. People in fact who are coming and giving those guarantees I would have my issues with trust but what I'm largely trying to say is if you're looking for placement guarantees then GJ may not be a place for you that's one. Second, we are not looking for people and GJ may not be for you if you come from dog eat dog world or if you follow the rat race culture as well. GJ is known to have collaborative people, GJ is known to have kind people who will follow game theory and would rather understand to collaborate with each other rather than pit each other, pit against each other, compete and then um, unfortunately get that job at the expense of breaking the trust with someone else absolutely not gj is certainly not for you if you come from that mindset as well with that maybe we could go back in history and then understand where did the schooling come from where did really education come from at the heart of things education and schooling always came from a point of imagination and a point of curiosity there is one thing that has separated us humans against the other species that we have been extremely imaginative people. That's how Einstein was able to come across the theory of uh, special relativity and was able to eventually verify it through the mathematical equation as well. And we have been extremely curious people as well. One thing led to others and then eventually there was a schooling concept and schooling ecosystem that came into existence. There were prince and sons of kings and queens who would go to school and get educated around philosophy, around defense art and many other such subjects right that is I would say has always been the ethos at GGI as well it is not for those people that who are just looking for placement CTCs needless to say there are a lot of people who have joined BCG who have joined World Bank who have joined McKinsey as well who have joined Bain who joined impact investing uh, firms as well. But I would still not take a lot of pride in that. I would rather take pride in the fact that people join GGI because they want to widen their thought horizons. So uh, I know that a lot of alternative to international MBAs will talk about, uh, let's say their CTCs or their placement figures, but I would not want to convince you if that is what convinces you. 
then maybe GJ is not for you. GJ to my mind is a culture. It's a way of life. It's a way of things. People who are extremely curious, people who are maybe a misfitter, when they work in organizations, they understand that I do not like the joke of my boss. I would not want to laugh or I do not enjoy drinking with my peers that I don't enjoy. GJ is for those misfitters who understand they have always been unique. They have always been really special. So GJ is for those people. And if I were to take anecdote, why GJ for you? Naman, you and I both know we have served government of India and we will be extremely lucky. We were able to crack our GMAT. We were able to afford fees worth lakhs. Um, I was really fortunate to go to a leading premium B school in India with an exchange at HPS and Fletcher as well. But I also know of my peers who were not able to crack GMAT who were not able to afford that fees. And you and I know of people, and I would not take names, who got stuck behind in those ecosystems for years, not months, at the same designation. So if you're stuck in your life, if you're not able to crack competitive left brain examinations such as GMAT and CAT, and you can't afford fees worth 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, today HPS cost 2 CR, top premium MBA schools cost 50 lakhs and 40 lakhs, then GJ MBA can be for you. For the three reasons that Naman mentioned, you will be able to pivot, you will be able to go and join premium organization, you will be most importantly, find a community for yourself. Today, a lot of my peers, a lot of my alumni network from my MBA school came and helped in and gave a helping hand in the initial years of GGI. Your Dean at Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy has been an extremely ardent supporter of GGI. In fact, we have formal collaboration. But you will unfortunately fall a little bit behind in life when you will not have that peer group for yourself and not just any random peer group. Quality peer who are international in network who really come from premium backgrounds but who just couldn't solve for their uh, GMAT and competitive examination like CAT because they are just extremely left brain. So that is what my answer will be that uh, over and above your beautiful answer that uh, GG is not a placement agency. There are many placement agencies go and join that. And it's unfortunate that a lot of GGIs come after doing their MBA, come after doing their ISP MBA as well, which falls again to the criteria of that GG is for those uh, courageous folks, is for those misfitters folks who are just trying to upskill themselves, who are just trying to pivot themselves and who are most importantly trying to find a sense of kind-hearted people uh, because they've just fallen a little lonely in life. There are placement reports. We are not here to discuss our placement report. There are umpteen number of people who give uh, a great review or uh, great testimonials about uh, us as well. You can go and check them on LinkedIn. But we as founders have a value system and we wanted to discuss that. Happy to hear, Naman, if you might have a double click on it, if you might have any other uh, remarks about this. I think one question that I want to talk about would be something called ROI. You know, it's very good question. What is my ROI? Why should I do anything? Why should I buy an iPhone? What's the ROI? Yeah. Why should I go to Stanford? What's the ROI? So I think uh, I would want to sp speak very briefly in this context of ROI, return on investment. I think, uh, and I think the next few minutes of discussion around ROI will also give you a good template on how you can apply this in your life and whatever you want to achieve. At the end of the day, I don't want to sell anything. We just want to talk about things in a very objective manner. And then you can perhaps take your own decisions. See, any ROI will have certain components to it. The first component would be economical. How much does it cost me? And how much can I make out of it? Simple. You know, if I'm putting in 20 lakh for an MBA in Gurgaon or Bangalore, how much will I earn after that? Yeah. That's the first component of an ROI. And I will advise my editor to put this screenshot. And you know this, that with every, almost all the employers, we have a WhatsApp group. And uh, just look at the screenshot. This is with Mukesh. We collaborated with his organization in patent investing. The person he's talking about, he, Chris, he got a 30 lakh package. More than that. But More than that. Well. Yeah. Around 30 lakh or beyond that. Post, it's like post MBA thing. And he put in like 50,000 or 60,000 for a, I don't know the exact numbers, but that's how much he put in for a GGI program. That's an ROI. How much you put in and how much you get. Additionally, here in the message, there is a component around, you know, uh, what kind of exposure Chris is getting or his peers are getting. Nowhere in the world you get such level of connectedness. That's the economic value of an ROI. That's one thing. But economic value is not alone. That's the bare minimum. I will, of course, solve for that. Shratakshi will, of course, solve for economic value. Otherwise, no organization can thrive. You will solve for it. The second thing and the most important thing then would be what's the societal value? What's the community value? How is GJ perceived? Today, if you were to write to a BCG partner, they will respond in good spirit. Yeah. Why? Because they value what GJ has to offer. There are 
umpteen examples when universities and colleges such as INSEAD wrote us an email just to confirm is this a fellow from TGI. Why? Because it adds value to wherever you want to go. Functional value is third thing that I want to talk about. If you look at GGI, is it just about acquiring skill sets or community or does it go beyond that? In terms of functionalities, TGI has built in collaborations, partnerships with Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Fletcher provides guaranteed scholarships beyond 15, 16 lakh rupees. That's functional value. In terms of functions, what else do I get access to? Being part of the GGI community. In, from incredible masterclasses to great community, what else do I get access to? Schrodinger, various tools that we have de developed. Trinity, an in-house platform where you can watch incredible stalwarts of various industries. So if you were to look at ROI, think from all these angles, from economic value to functional value to societal value, and see and do your own research and analysis, does it make sense? So you can pitch DGI, you can pitch any other organization and come to a conclusion. Do not let a YouTuber, do not let a sponsored advertisement do this for you. Yeah. Do it on your own. And then come to a conclusion. People pursue an MBA degree to pivot into a better job, better role, better offer. They don't do an MBA so that they can start businesses. It's a travesty that in today's day and age, there are many lovely universities visiting Chole Badude stalls, doing their, their analysis. Why? So that a video can go viral. Hiring YouTubers to come into their programs. Why? So that they can get onto various numbers. That's not the goal with which we started TGI. TGI is beyond it. TGI is beyond numbers. TGI is more about values. And those values are not just confined to functional, economic, or in this case, societal value. But those values are also intrinsic in how we shape up our fellows. And this is in turn, you know, it's, 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 at the end of the day, it's about creating incredible leaders who will transform not just the way businesses operate, but also society's function. And there are ample examples of, of, of our collaborations with ministers who have hired their OSTs and lateral entrants and interviewed people who were part of the ecosystem. Why? Because they thought that these are the leaders who would go on to shape the modern India, the modern South Asia, the modern Southeast Asia, the modern North America. So that's my response around ROI. If you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. No, that's a very beautiful answer and thanks for questioning that because I understand from students' perspective that might be a valid question. I'll just add two things over and above, Naman, what you have said. Uh, number one is uh, the kind of... I, growing up in my mid-20s, in fact, early 20s, I believe I was really underconfident girl. Even though I graduated from the so-called St. Stephen's College, mm -hmm. I had that imposter syndrome. But over a period of time, I think I really found my footing in corporate world after I worked with the industry stalwarts, including the former chairman of McKinsey and Company. And what I realized even at GGI, when students interact with Janmay Jayasena, who's been the current chairman of BCG, or who have interacted with someone like Rajat Gupta, who's the former global in first ever Indian CEO of McKinsey and Company, or um, Ashok Lavasa, uh, who has been the former election commissioner of India, um, and more than 150 such people, the kind of confidence that you get, which is uh, where I think uh, many a times people like to categorize things. In stocks, there is something called as overvalued stock or an undervalued stock. I think today, still after five years of GJ, I would say GJ is an undervalued asset. And I take an immense pride in the fact that given the ROI with respect to Chris example that you gave and many more example, GJ is still underrated because at less than lack of a fees, and the kind of ecosystem, the kind of people you interact with, the kind of resources at your disposal, be it around employment opportunities or be it around preparation or just widening your thought horizon, it's still underrated. And in life, I would always want to find the underrated stocks or the underrated assets as long as they are still underrated. Or rather than you pick up something like Tesla, which is overrated and then its uh, stock price is going down. So that's point number one. In the same line and breath, I would have point number two. Uh, we have umpteen example of people who were able to pivot their careers into jobs which were higher in salary. But I also want to talk about uh, those really special examples of people who didn't have a job when they came in, who were on a career break. There were people who were on a career break because of their pregnancy leaves, people who were on a career break because of uh, six years of break in UPSC, people who were on a career break uh, who came back from Columbia University without a job because COVID was at a prime. And while they were able to go to World Bank, they were able to find a job for themselves after six years of career break. And there will be a number value to it. It's almost going to be around 200 and 300 percentage because in terms of return investment, they never had a job, right? But then I would not actually restrain myself to the uh, ROI of economic value. I am going to think about the joy of the multiple impact that they are able to have in their lives, in their spouse's life, in their parents' life. 
and the confidence that they are going to have after being on a career break. So certainly I would say that in the terms of, and it's a good question from students point of view, what is the ROI I get? I would say over and above the ROI, think if you are investing in underrated stocks in life and overrated. And I take a lot of pride in the fact that we are still underrated uh, as an organization. And I would always want, if given a choice, to be underrated than uh, overrated. Yeah, so that's beautifully said, Shatakshi. I think uh, there's another valid question among amongst many youngsters that I don't want to work in BCG. I don't want to work in the UN. I want to launch my own business. And that's why I want to do an MBA. What are your thoughts on this aspect of things? It's a very good question, Aman, and I will once again have two-part answer to this, and I want to know your views as well. In my own MBA application, I wrote that my long-term goal is to become an entrepreneur, which I have become. Uh, but in the hindsight, it's another reality that uh, we were able to start uh, our entrepreneurial venture of GGI way before I worked in any BCG or McKinsey's of the world. Uh, however, a lot of network from my peer group, from my professor group during my MBA came in extremely handy. I have a view that people who want to start their venture will be irrespective be able to start their venture. Shall they have the courage? Shall they have the confidence? Shall they have the means and clarity on how to go about it? I really don't think that you need to do an MBA to be able to start your venture. Another example for it, in my HBS class around tech entrepreneurship, in a class of 75, when our class ended after a series of 10 lectures, my professor asked how many of you are actually going to start your entrepreneurship venture after an MBA. Five of us out of 75 rose our hands, right? And even five of us, I don't think all of them had actually started to go on to start our venture, which means that people, what they write on their MB application and what they end up doing in their real life is extremely different. So I'm going to question a question a little bit, which is what you said, I want to do an MBA for entrepreneurship. MBA can help you with the resources around funding, but I don't think funding is the most important equation in starting a venture. We are live examples of that. So you can certainly start your venture without having an MBA and then eventually MBA can help you move from 1 to 100. But you do not need funding until unless you're building the next SpaceX which requires really high fixed cost and you need to raise uh, money for that. Uh, people who want to start their venture are certainly able to start their venture without uh, doing an MBA or without going to BCG McKinsey's of the world, which is what we did. We started our ventures before our MBA or during our MBA campus. So I am going to turn this uh, back to you. A lot of people within GGI, in fact, uh, from Mexico, uh, Feminstem, uh, she started her venture and a lot of other people have been able to start their uh, venture. But I will give the credit to them. They were just the courageous people who were thinkers and uh, who were just really dreaming about a change in the world. Phenomenal points. I think uh, if you were to put in one CR for your education, I can give you in writing that uh, you would want to then recover that cost first and you will not have the luxury to take the risk to launch your own business. In that case, you would want to recover that cost. And over that age, over the time, you would realize you have families, you have kids, and then you will not have the risk to launch your own business. Second point that I want to add here is, uh, I'm seeing this pattern in the industry that uh, people are overselling the idea of uh, becoming our own boss. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in nine to five. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in having a stable job. In fact, these stable jobs provide you the ways and means to learn certain skill sets, which you can perhaps leverage later on if you were to do something of your own. I think, uh, and take a, take any any entrepreneur in India or abroad, look at Deepinder Goyal. He spent time in Bain yeah. before he became an entrepreneur. Why? Because he learned a lot many skill sets in Bain that perhaps he's leveraging and using in Zomato. Sachin Bansal, Bini Bansal, they all worked in Amazon before they launched their own version of Amazon, of Flipkart in India. So there's nothing wrong in getting a job. In fact, getting a job is a difficult task. Selling the idea that you'll work in a startup or you'll launch a business after an MBA, I don't think uh, that's the right way to think. I will advise you to pivot into jobs that may seem difficult, that may seem impossible, work in those jobs for a couple of years, then drop it off and launch your own, own companies. But have those experiences. Those experiences will shape you, will define you. And don't fall into this, this trap of becoming an entrepreneur becoming by watching a the, becoming a crorepati or a millionaire or whatever while paying a while paying fees to that organization or institution. Now I think my question is why is GGI underrated in terms of investment? I don't know the exact number, but why do people pay around fifty, sixty thousand 
uh, and there are at the same time many business schools in Bangalore in various parts of India and they are able to charge beyond 20 lakh or 10 lakh for the for even not the one percent of what the what GJ offers what is the reason and what's the rationality for that and don't you think it makes a lot of sense that we increase this number to yeah. 10 lakhs to yeah, 20 like, lakhs what's what's the harm why are you providing an under rated asset that's a very good question do you have a version of the answer and then i can share my answer of course I think uh, one reason, and I think this is not just about GTI, it goes to anything in life. You go back to the foundations. Yeah. What is the reason? In terms of foundations, if you think about it, at GGI, we have cautiously ensured that we have not raised a single dime from our investors. At least in Series A, Series B stage, investors are short-sighted. They, want, they are preparing for the next exit. Yeah. At GGI, we don't have that pressure. We don't care about the numbers in this case. And that is the reason we don't have YouTubers. I know I'm repeating this again, but it's a very important point to yeah. double down on. We don't care about the scaling. We don't advertise. We don't have marketing cost. And we want to ensure that at the end of the day, in the world of education, nothing can beat the quality. Absolutely nothing can beat quality. Otherwise, we, I mean, what's the reason, what's the rationale to put in so many paid advertisements? To all those who are watching this, you would not have stumbled upon any marketing email. You wouldn't have stumbled upon any promoted content on LinkedIn or anywhere or any promoted collaboration with any of the YouTubers. Why? Because we don't care about it. I know it leads to a lot of business loss for us, but that we are finding letting it, letting it go. And this, in a way, allows us to translate a lot of gains to our eventual beneficiaries. We will always promise less and deliver more. Until and unless we're doing that, I can sleep peacefully. And nothing else matter to me other than this. That's perhaps my reason, my rationality and why this happens. Of course, we have gone through the entire journey to ensure that money and finance is never the issue. Of course, that rationality also kicks in and that's why we also have openings of scholarships. But that is my rationality, that's my reasoning. Why others versus us in this case? Of sure. you. Uh, no, Naman, I think you have beautifully articulated the answer and once again, uh, we will go back to the foundations to understand why are we uh, so in inexpensive even compared to the alternative uh, to MBA programs, let alone compared to the MBA programs. We started as a non-profit organization, which is no profit, right? No loss, uh, you are trying to break even. And then uh, over a period of time, we uh, are a social impact organization. If you understand the difference in structures, a profit organization, what would they want to do? They would want to increase their revenue. Revenue is price into volume and they would want to decrease their cost. So for the same value, you would want to make sure that you price it as high as much as realistically possible. Even if you won't do that, your investors will pressurize you to do that. In fact, we have been on advisory call with many of our advisors who have guided and in fact scolded us that you are charging way less of an amount for the value that you are giving. So that's one. It's the structure of the organization. It's the social impact nature of how we are driving GGI consistently because of which we are fundamentally so low price. In the same breath, while we are the cheapest in the market, uh, we don't, uh, however, many a times talk about it because think from pure play business standpoint, cheapness can never be a strategic advantage. It's the product uh, that should be a strategic advantage. That's why we take immense pride in the master classes that we have around climate impact, around management consulting, around policy consulting, around liberal arts, or around Schrodinger Trinity that we have built in-house, or the extraordinary efforts that we take to build assignments for our students so that they are able to crack really high quality interviews, or the buddy ecosystem, or the employment opportunities, or the offline networking events that take place for GGI. So yes, it's a reality that uh, we are the most inexpensive, but of course, Naman and I will go on to do this as much as uh, because we are driven by impact, then by profits. We want to make sure, of course, that we are sustainable because we are not uh, externally funded. But impact will be the most important parameter because of which we will do this. And we will continue to take a lot of pride in the fact that uh, we are driving a lot of good quality education because Naman correctly mentioned the quality of education, the quality of impact um, and the quality of community that stands out uh, at the end of the day. And that's why uh, we are are here uh, since last five years and we are going to be here for many more years but we wanted to make sure that uh, we keep on inviting the misfitters the courageous ones and uh, the most importantly the kind ones who want to make a dent in the universe